There's a tiny plastic mark on the hard plastic and a, an arrow on the boot and basically that will give you the correct alignment. Tab. There's a tab on the inside which is going to go in the middle. Yep. The best way to deal with this and get the is to get the map sensor out altogether and you do that by unplugging the computer or the main fuel injection control unit. You've got to put grease or silicone on the metal map sensor in order to get it to slide into the boot. A little lubricant on those upper screws so when you push that through the rubber grommets you then uh, got to hold it tight and get your screws started. Don't guess where the boot goes. Use the alignment marks and everything will be exact and will fit perfectly back into the bike. You won't have any leaks. This clamp is the bigger of the two and it goes there. The smaller clamp goes on the plenum right here. Be careful when you put the hose clamp on. It's easy to end up hitting this plastic and damaging it. You want to get your clamp closer to this side to get a better uh, grip on the map sensor. The seal as close as possible to here because what the seal is really squeezing on is the metal map sensor which doesn't extend that far into the boot. Everything is correct when you're unable to rotate this boot. If it rotates easily, it's not on right. Remember when you took these off that this little bump here goes on the back screw facing inside. So this little button faces out, this little tab on each throttle body. Here's the plenum. Basically, I left off the clamps except the ones on the bottom, which I took. Instead of using the autocar clamps, I ground down regular clamps to make them thinner. Basically, you have two choices, zip ties or the autocar clamps. Any other clamp band is too wide. Runs, put the boots on, push them on, see where they match up, and uh, get a feel for what it should look like on things. I put the plenum on. This is the new k and filter. The k and filter is washable. Also, the bottom is flat, so that makes it easier, much easier to take out. The top does have a ridge in it. The bottom, which is flat, can leak because that's the dirty side before it goes through the air filter. The top side you don't want to leak. Yes, I took a needle and those pliers, grabbed it, and was able to put it into place and then lock it on. So you want to put these clips on the bottom half before you put the top on. Okay, I used a label. And Okay, my boot was a little bit damaged, so I put sealing on it. It's cheap to buy this boot. It's only, I think, about $15 or $20, so I'd recommend replacing it. This is the coolant temperature sensor. Install it correctly. k and will be in the front of the bike and will be facing up as the arrow points. The idea with the k and is that it makes it easier. Now, you just need to go up just enough to get over this lip with the air box, which I found if you take and undo this strap, cut your zip tie, grab these wires and swing them up out of the way. You'll get some extra clearance here. Something you might want to consider, I noticed that the main frame bolts on this motorcycle when I first got it had been taken off and I wondered why. I think possibly there's a shortcut to doing this kind of work where you could loosen these bolts up, lift the frame up a little bit, uh, maybe just a few inches or something. It makes it easier to get at everything. The new boots cost $100. Whether you use new or used boots, consider sealing the inside with silicone. I capped this off because I'm making a custom breather tube. Have no fear about reusing your thermostat. Mine was sticking badly uh, because it had a lot of junk on it. I cleaned it up really good and now the bike runs amazingly. Uh, it takes only 20 to 30 seconds when the fan comes on before it shuts off even when it's about 85 or 90 degrees. Basically, I put a little grease in the bore here, and then that rubber O-ring, I applied 3M weather strip adhesive because otherwise, when I put the thermostat in there, the little rubber O-ring kept coming off. So here's the, uh, the, the stuff. You could use this, or you could use high tech. You're going to need to get the hooks over these rubber blocks first before you tighten the upper screw. So there's three points of contact. Those two rubber blocks. And then the screw. I found it easier to work with this side. Get this hook right here over the rubber block. You want to have your eye out for obstructions. Over here, I loosened this inner bolt and took it out. That way, I'm able to pull the fairing and flex it out a little bit in order to get things in there. Again, you're going to want to make sure did you tighten all your clamps on the intake plenum? and for the lower radiator hoses before you put that radiator in. This is essential to take off. 
it's easy and it means that you can put the hose on the radiator end first or this end probably radiator end is better tighten it up and then go ahead and put this in place much easier than trying to fight the hose into there be careful when screwing in this bolt it uh, gives you the sensation that it started and that it's on there but it's not notice that the angle here is not straight your radiator fan in I put a label with my brother label printer I made sure to put dielectric grease in here too and having a label on each end makes it really simple and really clear it also helped me to be able to see the wire which it tucked over to that side okay next I tightened this up and again I put a tiny bit of grease around there and the hose slides on nicely I made sure that it's a smooth run and that it's not hitting anything or be better off putting this on first so it's natural and comfortable the way it wants to go and then this can rotate in any direction okay next I put this on first bolted it up and I didn't tighten this because I wanted to be able to free, be free to move around same thing at this end I haven't tightened it yet so what I like to do is get the hose in place make sure everything it, that it joins is comfortable and then tighten the hose last next I put this masking tape note on I used a zip tie on here and did the same at the other end to take off the uh, BMW crimp clamp I used my grinder stick your finger in here and spin your fan does it make any noise does it spin freely or are there any wires or anything else hitting it okay I have a little tape over the hole to keep junk out and as a reminder that uh, I need to reinstall the little breather for the gas tank the silicone spray wasn't even enough I actually had to grease this thing in order to get it on it was really a tight fit plan to take apart connections one at a time and apply dielectric grease. It's easy to break plugs, especially if they've been taken apart a long time. Over here, I loosened this up and I adjusted this a little so it didn't press so hard against the gas tank. And I actually super glued a penny to the gas tank because this was starting to dig into it. Special thanks to Luke in Brisbane, Australia on the Flying Brick Forum. He suggested relocating the fuel pressure regulator here. Still water is the only way to go and if you get any leaks when you're checking your connections it's much easier to deal with an antifreeze. Because that's going to hook on it. There, I've got it in there. It's like a little hinge. And I should hear a click. Okay, did you hear that? There was an actual click. You must use high pressure fuel injection hose. You can get that at any European auto store. Basically, this operates at high pressure. If you use traditional gas line, it will actually start to craze and crack. Check very carefully for fuel leaks as the pressure is 32 psi continuously. As you check for leaks, you know, make sure your work area is all cleaned up. You haven't forgotten things. I like to keep my fire extinguisher with the pin pulled out so it's ready for action. This little notch here has to line up with the hole on the top of the gas tank, and that's your vent tube. This is the hole right here. I blew compressed air into this vent hole for this tube, and I found out it comes out on the bottom. This rearmost tube on the lower right bottom corner of the tank connects with that vent hole. I replaced that about five years ago because I had it out of the tank for an extended amount of time and it seized. I bent that rod up a long time ago and that way my gas low light comes on at around 120 miles. An important item is replacing these seals. I forget what they run but they're only maybe $50 for all of them. If you rebuild your gas cap, you'll help keep water out of the tank. You can also grease the inner mechanism so it doesn't stick. Basically, plan to take a lot of digital pictures and really take your time. Take a picture of every single part you remove so it goes back together easily. Not by trying to shoot graphite down here, which does absolutely nothing, but by going in, disassembling it, and putting in uh, some grease in there. You turn, hear a click and it opens right up. To make it easier on the on this sliding mechanism what I like to do is I'd like to put pressure on here and then turn the key. Here's that